right, so today we're going to be going through 10 things and they'll, they'll flow really quickly, but I just want to give you an overview. We'll talk about what is a will, why a will is important, what's the benefit of having a will, preparing to write your will, creating an account with will and tomorrow, completing the will making steps, paying for your will, making it legally valid. Talk, we won't talk about will and tomorrow for business, but we are open for your questions. Joining me um, this evening for this call for a friends and family event, it wouldn't be possible without the team. So the idea is that each team member has reached out to their small network and invited them to be a part of this evening session. And this team comprises of myself, Shante, Ruel, and Ranil. And so I want to thank them all and thank you for the contributions that you're making to Will and Tomorrow. And hopefully this evening, one of these team members will be very happy that they did all this work to invite you out. All right. We're starting off now with a quick video. No matter how Jamaican people go on like that. Of course. No matter how Jamaican people go on like them talk, we don't like to think about dying, so we don't talk about wills. Some people think wills are complicated or expensive, or you only need one if you have plenty of things. That's wrong. A will is a show of love to the people you leave behind, and that will and tomorrow.com. Making a will is easy, affordable, and takes about 30 minutes. So we could talk more wills now, and not when we mash up and wish Uncle Devon had written down, who forget the house, where the bank account in there, and who's supposed to take care of his mother and his little daughter Kimmy. Make your will today at willandtomorrow.com. Use promo code WILL10 to get started. So yeah, we are talking about wills now and not when we mash up, right? That's what Carla is saying. So I want to hand over now to Shante, who is going to take us through the first couple of sections. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andre. I am going to just ask you, everybody here at least has an idea. That's the reason you signed up, because, you know, you know what a will is in a general sense. So we're going to go into the details. And it's nothing complicated. It's nothing too, you know, highfalutin. So we're just going to go into a simple definition, and then we'll get into the meat of the matter. The next slide, please. One second, please, Shante. So essentially, a will is a document that outlines somebody who has deceased, the last wishes of the person who is deceased. Now, oftentimes we think of, the, of, a, of a will as something that deals solely with property or solely with what people want at their funeral or how to deal with their last um what you call it no their last wishes but a will can be so much more than that so legally speaking it's a document in which a person specifies the method to be applied to the management and distribution of his or her estate after his death and estate simply means all that you own all that you are in control of and responsible for legally so it doesn't mean Physical land only doesn't mean um, something expensive. It can mean anything that you own. So somebody gave a handbag, somebody gave a laptop, you know, you know a little game there. But obviously, we don't own port, port more, so we couldn't give port more. And it is a legal instrument that not only outlines the wishes of what the, the, the person who would have passed wants or wanted, but it also gives the persons who survive that person the legal right to manage their affairs. So it's twofold. It outlines what you want done and how you want it done, but it also empowers the persons who are left behind to do what you want done, right? All right, next slide, please. So in light of that, we know that 
I'm sure all of us have heard about the will forms, the infamous will forms you can find in Woolworth or some other um, pharmacy. So it is a legal document and there are some requirements under the Wills Act of Jamaica. I've just kind of summarized them for you, but if you're interested, you can find out more details. So first and foremost, a will must be in writing. It must be a physical document in writing in black and white, whatever you want to call it. It must be in writing. It must be made by someone with legal capacity. So most of us know that you must be an adult to have a will. A child does not have legal capacity. Anybody under the age of 18 doesn't have legal capacity to own any property, right? So you must be an adult under the law in Jamaica and you must also be mentally sound. Some of us, as some people, as they get older, they lose their mental faculties. So whether it be through disease or just old age, the person who is making a will at the time that they make the will must be legally sane or leg legally capable and be found by the court to be, I don't want to say sensible, but fully able and aware of whatever the decisions are, right? So I said that already, they must be, they must be in control of their mental faculties and it must be made voluntarily. No one can, no one should force you to make a will. It must be done free from any pressure, any undue influence, any fraud. So somebody shouldn't tell you this document is a contract or a agreement for sale and you've really signed your will. It should be something that you are very clear about, you understand and you have willingly done it, right? You have really signed it. And a term of art that we use, I think Andre was reading some of them earlier. A will, it doesn't, in order for your will to be legally sound, you need to have what is called a residuary clause. And we'll get into what that is a little bit later. But that's one of the things that most people don't know about, even if you know about numbers one to four, as just somebody who is, you know, okay with things in general. No, most people don't know about it. And you and you will learn why it's so important to have a residuary clause as we go forward. Next slide, please. So what a will is not, and this is what I think many people, this is how many people get, not to say in trouble, but they get a little bit confused. So first and foremost, we said it, we're, we're not, it must be in writing, correct? And with those basic requirements, you cannot, I am not aware, if anybody is aware of those changes, please correct me. I am not aware currently in Jamaica that audio recordings are not considered a will, right? So even if you have the testator or the person who would have passed in a recording stating exactly what they want to have happened, I do not know at this time that we accept that. I know some jurisdictions, I believe, have video wills, we don't have that. So whatever you want has to be written out on paper in writing. So go back to those will forms. So many of us, maybe our parents or even ourselves, we get the form, we fill it out and it's not signed. So even though the document says will at the top, you've identified who the person is, they've identified their assets, an unsigned will form is completely unenforceable. A blank will form is completely unenforceable. A will that is not completed or signed, any piece of paper that is com not completed or signed, unenforceable. A listing in, a, in the person who has passed or the testator's handwriting is also not a will. So it's a, oh, but mommy write with everything what she wants, so it's fine. No, it is not a will if it is not signed and the other formalities are not met. And then finally, what other people have said, what is or isn't the testator's last wishes. So, you know, people, maybe, maybe there's a caretaker, a spouse who was with the person up until their last moment, you know, we want to know, say that person you now feels like they have the authority to dictate what should happen because they were with the person up until the last moment. However, even though that person may feel that way, there is no 
will there. There is nothing legally binding to push or prompt or compel anybody to follow what that person is saying. All right. Thank you very much. Next slide. So why is having a will important? For obvious, well, maybe not so obvious. So first and foremost, without a will, the government decides how your property is going to be divided. Nobody wants the government in their business. I know I don't, right? Nobody wants that. And interestingly enough, there is a specific order that the law specifies that I know most of you are not aware of as to how your will, rather how your property will be divided and distributed should you die without a will. And here we have it. Let us run, let us run it down quickly. First and foremost is the spouse of the testator. So the, the spouse of the testator can either be the common law spouse or the person who they are legally married to. So let me just give you an example of that. In Jamaica, we know we have common law unions, right? But people often get it mixed up. A common law union must be where the two persons are not married and they are not engaged in any other form of long-term union that is recognized by the law. So two single people must come together and live continuously as husband and wife for a minimum of five years, right? And there are other whole other things that they check to make sure that is in line. So if you qualify as a common law partner, great. However, if you are the live-in girlfriend, of a married man, or if you are the live-in boyfriend of a married woman, you are left out in the cold if that person doesn't have a will, okay? If you have been the living partner of somebody for four years, you are left in the cold. If you are the living partner for some, of somebody for four years and 10 months, you may have a chance, the court may take pity on you, but legally speaking, you are left out in the cold. So if you're not legally married or if you're not in a union recognized under the common law union, you have absolutely no right if your partner left you without a will. Issue, children, this, this speaks to children who are born within the wedlock and out of wedlock. And I know most of you would have known that they changed the status of children based on the status of, of children act so even if somebody were in was in a relationship and they, and you know as far as they're aware they only have two children with a particular person if that person is later on revealed to have 15 children outside all 15 of those children become entitled to the remains of that person's estate and how this works how this distribution works now it's not a matter of all these people get equal shares. No, there's literally a hierarchy. The spouse gets the lion's share, right? And then whatever is left after the spouse has been allocated with the proper um, property, then the children get what get what let, let us call it the what is left over, and that is divided amongst each child. Right, so if there is 15 children, everybody get one fifteenth of the property, right? And then no, it is only if th those two categories are out of the picture that everybody else below number two comes into the picture. So if there is no spouse, they go to the children. If there is if there is no children, or if there is a um children and parents, then they divide it up. So as you go down the line. The, the pie gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? And then at the end, it does, it does provide what, it, it, it doesn't say majority, but it specifies um, how the spouse is to be treated. So they, they go through and say specifically what the spouse is to get, and then the remainder is to everybody after the spouse in terms of priority. But um, I should leave that for the Q&A section, right? So it continues all the way down to half-blood uncles and aunts. So those of you who are very close with your cousins, close with other members of your family, you know, you might, you may, maybe you're not, you're not in a good stead with your parents, all of that, it, and you want to give grandma something instead of, instead of your father who wasn't there, 
you see where grandpa and grandma is all the way at number six. So them good in again nothing when every, when everything done. Okay. So that is one of the issues that we have as well. So that is that's why it's so important to have a will. Next slide, please. What are the benefits of having a will? The benefits outside of not having the government in your business. So it makes your final wishes and arrangements clear for your family members in a highly stressful time. And, it, and speaking from experience, this is something that I think can be extremely helpful to the remaining family members. You are not thinking about it now, but it's extremely helpful. If you are somebody who is a planner and you specify down to the very colors you want for your going home or memorial service, that's so much less stressful, right? You can even put in your will to say, okay, I have a life insurance policy that, you know, will come in. It is this number, it is that place, it is whatever. That's what I want to be used for the coverage of my expenses. Nobody's under any stress to try and find any money to go and, you know, have a special offering, none of that. It is a way of organizing your current affairs to ensure that the people in your life are taken care of. So many of us have so many people who depend on us. And we're not thinking about the future, but the way, but, I, but creating your will allows you to itemize exactly how, when, how much the people who you deem, you know, people you care for, people you deem important, how they are to be taken care of after you pass, knowing that, you know, you won't be there to help them out, right? It allows you to also recognize the gaps in various areas of your life. Do you need more insurance? Do you need, a, do you need a different type of insurance? Do you need to sort through your succession plan as it relates to a business that you own? Do you need to have um, a plan for your children, minor children? Do you, are you the guardian, the legal guardian of anybody who may be an adult who's in you know, adult care? How will your parents be taken care of? All of that addresses the gaps in your current needs. Do you need to be earning some more money when you write down all of your assets? You don't have anything to give to anybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Outside of your laptop or your cell phone. Do you probably need to earn some more money? All of these things are what you can think about, right? And last but by no means least, going back to our previous slide, a will keeps you in control of your affairs and keeps the government out of your final affairs. A side note, brethren and friends, you all know how hard and how long it takes for you to get something at the tax office, right? Let me just tell you that the Administrator General's Department, which is the Department of Government that deals with people who die without wills, the backlog is literally years. So you can die in 2000 and, God forbid, 2001, and your family will get through in 2018. There, are, there have been cases of, of delays in excess of 10 years. And just a side note, I was, I was speaking to somebody at Admin General sometime in the past, and they were letting me know that, listen, the priority at this point within the department is not adults, it's children. So, all, so the cases and of people who die with um, minor children, that is what they are prioritizing. So if that person died with other adults and you say, you know, you need to sell the house, you need to get whatever done, it does not matter to them right right now. You matter, but not that, you're not that important. So it can be a real headache, especially if there's a lot of um, property left over, personal property. All right. Next slide, please. So preparing to write your will. So all of this is in your head now. Okay, I need. I definitely need to write a will. I need to write a will. I need to write a will. That's why you're here. Now, it may seem overwhelming at first, but we have prepared and created a wonderful checklist and prep list for you to get your mind addressed to the process. Right? Carla said in the video, it takes about 30 minutes to write the will once you started the process, but it can be. To be prepared means that. It will make the process easier. So you prep first. I don't know if Andre can zoom any at all on this for me, but the, 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 the prep list is available in our resources section on the website. And it just gives you a little idea of what you need to do. So, the, so it has several headings. We have executors, guardians, 
beneficiaries, assets, uh, final arrangements, right? So it gets you get your mind addressed to all of these things before you start the process, which will be very helpful. So it's free, it's on our website, and you can download it and start looking through through the through the list so that you can get yourself ready to make your will once and for all. All right. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll address them during the QA segment. Awesome sauce. Thank you very much, Shante. Um, the resources page on our website is also somewhere you can go to read about, you know, we have a few articles there now, more coming up. Um, because I know people are usually very curious. And the overview that Shante just gave really um, should be sobering, but at the same time, it's not meant to frighten you into any direction. If, I, if anything, we want you to make a decision to make a way with Will and Tomorrow out of an abundance of having the right information and just being proactive and knowing that making a will is not just it's not something to be afraid of. It's not something to consistently be putting off and saying, oh, I can do this next time or when I reach a certain age or a certain milestone. If anything we're seeing with COVID and with Delta and with new and the, the new variations that come out every week almost, um, is that life is very unpredictable. So with Will and Tamar, we have taken on a difficult subject matter, but we know it's an important one. All right. So before we continue, Andrew, just just wanted to say too, and I think I didn't put some a slide, but creating a will, I think, takes away that fear, or sometimes takes away the fear of the unknown. You feel like you are more in control, so you can sit and plan with your family. It's not a, it's not something I believe that should be a secret, although people have their own views on that. It's something that can make you feel very much empowered, you know, so you feel as if you are in control even when you are not around. Awesome. All right. So we promise not to keep you very long. We have we started at 6.30 and we have it scheduled to end just before 7.30. So those who have to leave, hopefully we've caught your attention and you can stick around a little bit longer. Um, but if you have to leave, we're recording the session and we will um, send out a link to you afterwards. But please stick around because... We're going to be showing you a little bit more about Will and Tomorrow specifically. And then I believe that we will benefit from some of the questions that people are saving to ask live. Just open your mic and talk to us and we will um, answer those in the Q&A section. All right. So I'm pressing right along. Um, I want to show you how to create an account with Will and Tomorrow. So all in all, Will and Tomorrow is this website. So literally how you're able to join us from your computers and your phone you're able to access the platform to make your will from wherever you are um, using our website. When you go to our website, you'll see this amazing um, design that Ruel has done, Ruel was on the call earlier. And um, we are really thinking about how do we get people to feel comfortable, to, feel, to not feel daunted, to not feel like this is a daily, daily topic. We are thinking about that a lot as we go through the process of designing will end tomorrow. And, um, and hopefully you're seeing that in, in the experience of using the website. If you click on register, which is where the pink arrow is, it will take you through a certain funnel. And if you click on um, the login, it will also allow you to go back into your account. Because, because it's online, you are able to start and complete it if you, have, if you need to contemplate a part of it a bit more. So that's one of the benefits of using our platform. All right, so the first thing is you go to willandtomorrow.com and the link has been shared in the chat and you will see our website. You can start reading, you can start appreciating what we have been building. From there, um, the first thing that you'll see is we've noticed that people tend to create accounts and put them down and then we have to really nudge them to follow up. But what we've decided to do is to say to you, you're already committed to the cost of paying for a will, which for anybody who doesn't have a discount code, it's 11,955 Jamaican dollars, that's it. But what we've done is we've broken that up so that you pay uh, the first portion of about 
of not about $3,977 upfront. And then you create an account and you start answering the questions. And then at the end of answering the questions, you submit the document, you pay the balance, which is um, $8,977. So that's how we've broken up the, the cost of covering a will. So for somebody who goes to a website and you click on register, you're going to be taken to this page. And that's where you enter your, your details. There's a three day um, trial, which means that your card isn't, isn't charged until three days later. But, but for today's participants, we have a special available that doesn't quite have that three day trial because hopefully, unlike the people who come to our website on their own, you have an opportunity to interact with us get a lot more information face-to-face -face or virtual to virtual. And you may not necessarily need a three-day trial in order to access the discount that we have in store for you. All right, um, so that's it. And then after you go through that paywall, we ask you exactly some pre-qualifying questions. Where do you live? Are you over 18? Stuff like that. And once you answer those questions correctly, um, you create your account using this page and then you are in the dashboard. Now, this takes us to step six, which is completing the will making steps. This is what your dashboard looks like. When you join in, you'll see your name, not Andre, and it will say, create your will. And then from there, you see this interface. And this interface breaks down the will making process into seven steps um, with questions that are grouped um, into different steps. So step one asks you all about you. Step two asks you whether or not you have children. And if you do, it asks you some more questions. Step three talks about who do you want to be your executors and the rest of the steps go along. Literally, you can complete the will making steps in less than 30 minutes. Once you know what to expect from these steps, you've thought about some of these things. For instance, you can't just write any random person. Well, it's not advised that you write any random person as your executor because the responsibility of the executor is somebody who is around when you are not, they will get your will, will document, and they will carry out your wishes and they will work with the established system in order to get access to the assets that are in your name. So you want somebody who has proven to you through your relationship and interaction with them, that they are trustworthy, that they will, they will be up to the task, that they are people who are not going to, you know, disregard your wishes or, or be slow in acting on your will. You really want to choose who your executors are wisely, and you have to choose two people at least. All right, so these are the will making steps, we, which is basically the grouping of the questions to allow us to get the information that generates your will. All right, and then from there, I wanted to have you hear from somebody who has used Will and Tomorrow. I think Will and Tomorrow is a fantastic service. I've already referred a few people, uh, recommended that they start creating their will. It's a valuable and needed service. There are so many people that die without leaving a will and making the process easier to understand and easier to actually follow through. I think will help people really start to take control of what should happen to their assets when they die, what they want to see happen, and avoid a lot of the legal challenges and family problems that do occur. So I think Will and Tomorrow is just so needed and it's the right time for it. Thank you, Bianca. Um, every time I watch that video, I am pretty glad to hear those encouraging words. Okay, so I briefly talked about paying for your will. And what I'm doing here is kind of showing you what the general process is, but then also talking about your process. So because Will and Tomorrow is a business and we are investing a lot into making this product, the kind of product that can help as many people as possible, we are charging you an affordable amount to be able to make a will for you. Now at the link, which is on the homepage. So if you remember, we're encouraging everybody to go to the homepage of willandtomorrow.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a section that talks about the friends and family, right? And then there's a get started. Um, let me just navigate all the way back up to that so you can see. Um, here it is. 
So this section of the, of the homepage has the start today button that is specific for people who've come to this session, right? So go to the homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see this section. And where the pink arrow is, that's where you access um, this page that you are about to see yet again. All right. So I remember we told you that a will is for 11,955 Jamaican dollars. And because of our friends and family session and this kind of internal competition that we have going on, the individual that told you about Will and Tomorrow's um, session this evening actually has um, a, 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 a real reason for wanting you to come out today. One, making a will is important for everybody who is over the age of 18 that has been working, that has somebody in their life that they want to make sure gets what they have been um, amassing so that it doesn't go through the long drawn out process that Shante told you about ha that happens if you don't have a will. So that's the first reason for being invited today. We want you to have the peace of mind that comes with knowing that you have done this thing, you've sorted it out and it is there. Now, as an added incentive and because we know you, if you use one of these coupon codes in the section here where the yellow arrow is, you can add the promotion code. If you use one of these coupon codes here, you get $4,000 off of that $11,955 price point. So imagine getting one, paying two thirds of the price of a will just because you know Ranil, you know Shante, you know me, or you know Ruel. And so the coupon code that you will use Try to use the one for the person who invited you. Um, just go with Team Ranil, Team Shante, Team Dre, Team Ruel, and that will deduct $4,000 from your total. And instead of seeing $11,955, you will see $7,955. And that's something that's available to you between now and the end of September, because we really want to incentivize you for using Will and Tamar to make your will and also in, you know, reinforce that this is something that you should do now sooner than later. And then another thing too is when you think about it, these people who are a part of the team, we are building this company, we're building, we're working on getting this together. So your support is also something that we would appreciate. So the coupons are very easy to remember. The name of the person that invited you, and the word team in front of it, and it gets you 4,000 Jamaican dollars off. All right. Now, um, for the rest of the, when you, when you purchase um, an account with us at the get-go, you will get to a point in the will-making process where it's time for you to submit. And it's, it's, this is a page that you'll see where it asks you to make a payment to receive your will. So instead of clicking on, you're paying for one will now or two wills, seeing that you've already paid, you would click on the first button, which has already been, the, the, the text here has been updated. Um, it says, I've already paid for a will. And if you click there, then the email address that corresponds with the email address that you use to sign up and pay, if you enter that, it will allow you to um, submit your document to us. All right, all right. Now, the final part before we get into the Q&A is how do you make your will legally valid? And that's an interesting question. It really boils down to all the things that Shante mentioned earlier that a will needs to, needs to have in order to be recognized. And then also it needs to be signed by the testator as well as signed by two witnesses who are present at the same time over the age of 18 and have agreed to be your witnesses. When you get the document from us, because we also send you a physical copy of your, of your will in this folder so you can keep it safe, you will get, um, da, 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 right, it will have this cover page that gives you an overview of how to sign the document, what you need to remember in order to do that part. And it will show you this, um, this signature page. And this is where you put in some little details. You count the number of pages that are part of your will. You put in the date that you're signing. You sign yourself as a testator. And then the witnesses are also, um, are also signing and inputting their information here. 
And then once that is done, your will becomes legally valid and it will be recognized by the courts at the point of probate. Okay, again, these are the coupon codes. I'm gonna keep the slide up, make a note of them. Um, the beautiful thing is we timed this session to coincide with pay week. And so for a lot of people who are just like, oh, this is a good idea, but I'm gonna to have to wait until I get paid. Brethren and friends, I have it on good authority that you got paid today. So head over to willandtomorrow.com and um, create an account and start off with us. Okay, question and answers. I'm going to um, close the slideshow and spotlight myself and Shante so we can address the questions that you may have. Thank you very much for listening to us talk for the past, I don't know, 35 minutes. And for the next 14 minutes, we're gonna talk together um, and answer your questions. Shanti. Right. I'm gonna go to the two questions we have in the chat. I addressed the first one and I'm gonna look at the second and third that we've seen from Rayon Robinson. Hi Rayon, remember to put team Shanti. How is the will executed when after somebody dies? Okay, so the will goes through a process that is called probate. Right. So when you probate a will, the court establishes one validity of the will, first and foremost. Secondly, they assess and go through and ensure that everything inside the will is as it should be. So there are some stipulations that you can't give certain types of things, things, you know, technicalities as it relates to that. Right. And then after that, what the court does is that it then gives you what is called letters of probate, right? So letters of probate now means that your executors can legally go around and manage your affairs. So it's not that, it's, it's almost like ownership or these documents actually prove to anybody that you're conducting business with like if you're going to a bank if you're going to sell property if you're going to you know conduct business you can show this letter of probate that says listen i am the duly and legally appointed executor of this person and i am now empowered to conduct business on their behalf so say for instance Leighton, you have an account at ncb that you say you know needs to go towards your children's schooling. So the executor now is then empowered to withdraw money from that bank account, even though it's not in their name, right? They have money to withdraw that bank account and pay or give to whoever the child's caretaker is to pay that child's tuition or school fee, right? So if that was not the case, means that the bank is not going to give anybody your money because that you're not the person in charge. But it's it, it's almost like if you're familiar with the power of attorney, it's almost like a power of attorney for somebody who's passed, right? The power of attorney extinguishes upon the death of the person giving that power. So that is how it is executed. Secondly, does the will override a beneficiary of like say an insurance policy? Based on what I understand, and I will be corrected and I will update you if that is not the case, but the beneficiary document of an insurance policy is what takes precedence over certain aspects of the will. But if you properly prepare your will, as we are inviting you to do with Will and Tomorrow, you will have compiled all of those documents because an insurance policy is considered an asset. So you would have gone through, you would have assessed who is what and the, and the portions that are allotted to the beneficiaries. Some people give 60 or whatever and that will be reflected in your will so there will be no need for a conflict but based on what i am aware of now beneficiaries in an insurance policy do trump a will right so that, that, that is a whole separate legal arrangement as it relates to an insurance policy and the law of insurance yeah add to that shanti yes and i would also say that the speed with which an insurance policy is executed or acted on is light years ahead of the speed with which uh, a will is acted on. And so right. it benefits you to have your insurance policy say what you want and um, doesn't conflict with what your will would say because your insurance policy is going to be acted on 
um, almost, you know, as soon as possible. Instantly, yes. All right, we'll, we'll, the next question, how, do, how long does the court take to process? So right now, I can't give you a timeline, but I do know that on average, in about 2013, they were saying that, and don't, don't freak out, right? But the, if, if, if you have a, a good will and a good probate, probate attorney, they're trying to process, they're trying to give out letters of probate within a year of the person's passing. Now, that might, you might be like, a year? We're comparing that to the Administrator General's Department, and we're comparing that to years gone by where wills would take sometimes decades, a decade, five years. So they have sought to modernize and create a completely separate um, registry. There's, there's a registry simply for probate matters, and they do, as I say, give precedence to especially matters related to children and stuff like that. So you can, if you're really, really, really good, and if your lawyer is really on the ball, maybe six months, which is which is fast for anything in the court in Jamaica. Indeed. Just telling you the truth. All right. So that's that's not a guarantee, Alan. That's not a guarantee. I'm just saying that that is the last information I had. So between a year to six months. Um, will we be guiding the executors? OK, so the executors, as Andre alluded to, and it will be coming out in our in one of our newer posts that will be coming up before the end of this month. The executor, the person that you want to choose to be executor is somebody who has sense. One, the person should have sense. And when I say sense, I don't mean that they should be nice or anything like that. The person needs to be somebody who is has a clear mind, is, is you know, is dutiful, not beautiful, dutiful, will, will do what they need to do. And somebody who is trustworthy, honest, business-like, right? Because this is the person who all of the matters relating to the will will have to be carried out by. There's more than one. Sometimes you can have, you can have as many executives as you wish to, but they recommend the minimum is two. So this person will be interfacing and talking to the attorney who will be submitting your application for probate to the court. Currently, Will and Tamar doesn't offer the service of doing that for you. But probate attorneys will be the persons guiding guiding the, exec the executors through the process. And they are also the persons who need to keep the probate attorneys accountable and need to be checking up on that things need to be done. Hence, you want somebody responsible, have a clear mind, etc., and preferably somebody who is younger and healthier and less inclined to risk than you are. You want them to outlive you. So if that person is a party animal who goes skydiving, Maybe not a good idea to pick as an executor, right? I want to phrase this next question for you, Shante. Sure. Uh, can your child be an executor? And in, in answering that, mm -hmm. give a rundown of um, who is able to be someone's executor. Okay, great. Your child can be your executor once they meet the age of majority. And as I said, those are the criteria that you're taking into consideration. So if you have adult children, for instance, if you have a child who's a lawyer, you might want that person to be an executor. You have a child who's a doctor or a business person, you might, you might want that person to be an executor. They can indeed be your executor. Some other considerations to take into your mind, though, are the fact that executors technically are owed a fee for their services to the estate. So there are companies, there are law firms who can act as executors for very, very large wealthy estates. So for instance, somebody like Michael Jackson, you know, his estate is worth millions of dollars. You know, he probably doesn't want one of his brothers to do it for him. He wants somebody who is certified, you know, objectively apart from, you know, people getting the gifts. So they, I, I need to, I think the, the rate is specified by the Wills Act. I'm sorry, I don't have it for you, but I believe it is between either three and 5% of the total value of the estate that the executor is owed for a fee. I will double check and I will also put that up on the website. But, but yes, we can confirm that. Three? It's three. To six. Three to six? Yes. Three to six, right. So between this three to six percent of the entire value of the estate. Now the executor has the right to waive that fee if they so choose right or agree to a lesser fee but by law say in, for instance you have hired a company to do it 
that is what they more than likely will charge you. So they will value the estate and do the percentage and that is paid out to the executor at the end of the process, right? So after everybody gets everything they're supposed to get, they get their payment. So yes, indeed, your child can in fact be an executor. And most times people want their children to also be beneficiaries. We haven't spoken about that term, but a beneficiary is somebody who gets a gift under your will. So they can do both. Personally speaking, I would prefer that that not be the case unless it is un unavoidable or a special circumstance. Like, as I said, your child is an attorney or something like that. But preferably um, somebody who is trusted and somebody who I would say in my professional, um, let me not say that, I'm not giving anybody any advice. So somebody who I would say is separate and apart from the beneficiaries under the wheel, just for safekeeping so that nobody can say, well, you did this in order to push this agenda, you know? But your child can be the executor awesome. if, you, if you want them to be. All right, any other questions? We have another four minutes before we go. But until that, until that next question comes in, if it does, um, I wanted to remind everybody who is here as to what we're doing at Will and Tomorrow. We're really building an online platform and a suite of services that help people to think about their future, think about their family's future, and make it very easy for them to put plans in place. We're starting off with wills because it's the thing that is, you know, it's the lowest hanging fruit. And it's also something that for the price point that it's at, can have a huge difference or make a huge difference in the life of somebody who uses that tool wisely. So we're encouraging you. We're happy that so many of you have accepted this invitation to join us. And I think that's a good sign. And so I just wanted to remind you that we are asking you to do something specific in this session. And that specific thing is to uh, create a will with will and tomorrow. And to do so, you simply go to our website, willandtomorrow.com. You read, make sure that you feel comfortable with the information, get the prep list, have it on your iPad, print it out, start jotting down some things. Who, what are the assets that you have? One of the questions that hasn't come up today, but like Shante, uh, if you're a young person and you don't have a house, do you have anything to put in a will really? Yes, you do. Your assets are divided into real property, which would be the house, or personal property, which would be something like a laptop, Com camera equipment. Lots of us are into different things like that. Gaming equipment, clothing, jewelry, your That's motor vehicle. Yeah, for fight at a bank, you know, your account. Money, stocks. Exactly. There are so many people who are amassing them, buy them little hundred shares and then put it down and it's just growing. So these are things that you might not consider yourself to be, oh, one of the Fortune 500 richest people in the world. But the process of writing down your assets and using the prep list, I've been told since we've had Will and Tomorrow Lives and we've started making wills for people, that process of writing down your assets has been very eye-opening for a lot of people and they recognize that they do have quite a bit. So yeah. You've accepted the invitation. Thank you all. I'm seeing some names that I recognize. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We are going to honor our commitment to keep the session as an, at an hour, but we want to remind you of how you can support Team Shante, Team Ranil, Team Dre, and Team Ruel. And it's simply by going to our website, willandtomorrow.com, creating, clicking on, the, clicking on the link in the bottom of the page and that will bring you to your specific checkout page for you to be able to enter your coupon code team Shante, and that will take four thousand dollars off the total for making your will this is this offer is available to you between now and the end of september because we don't want you to just come listen and then oh that was nice to happen we're adding some urgency to it because every day is a gift and every day is an opportunity for us to you know, make the best of, of things. I'm seeing Mommy Booth on video. Thank you for turning on your video. Thank you for joining us from a different time zone. To everyone who has joined us, Ruel, who is also up very late. Thank you for all your work that you do with Will and Tamara, and I appreciate you being on this call. What we'll do is we ask you to register for the session. 
So we do have your email address. And for some people, we do have your phone numbers. What we'll do is we will share the slides with you. And we'll also share a link to the recording. So you can go back and listen to what we've said. And also send you a reminder that, you know, we haven't seen you. Check out just yet on willandtomorrow.com. We're hoping that you do want to make a will with us. If there are any other questions, you can reach out to us. Shante is here. I'm here. Any member of the team can answer certain questions. We're not here to give you legal advice. We're here to create a tool that helps you to get this very important legal document done using the information that you've provided to us. So with that, I want to thank you very much for joining us for this session. Is there any last minute question, any hands that are raised that I failed to see? No. To all the parents in the house, think about your children and their future. Looking forward to you using the tool of making a will to add some peace of mind and making sure that your children are taken care of. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, have a good rest of the evening. Send us a text, a WhatsApp. If you have any personal questions, we're happy to talk to you. And we're looking forward to having you as part of the Will and Tomorrow family. Oh, one last thing. If you're on social media, give us a follow and send our profile to somebody else. Talk to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I know I'm going over time, but I read something that said that people trust their peers. And that's why the video with Bianca really gets me every single time. Because when somebody that you know says that this tool looks like it's something that is of use and I've used it, we can save our marketing dollars, which are very expensive, by the way. So we're asking you to do us a solid, follow us on social media, send the link out to um, someone and encourage them to check out Will and Tomorrow. Encourage them to take the time now to make a will and make one yourself. So talk to you soon. Have a good night. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, Shante. Thank you, Ranil. Thank you, Ruel, for making this evening possible. Thank you all for joining. I'm so, so, so pleased to see so many of you come out and stay online for our one hour session on making a will with Will and tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Night, night. Good night. That's my auntie. <laughs> All right, auntie. Leighton, you stayed on. Thank you so much. Wasari, Rayon, Ranik, Roger. Yes, I'm here in two meetings, so I'm here trying to balance two. All right. Well, you're balancing acted over. We're finished now. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the recording. All right. Night. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Night, night.